What if one day everything you knew about your world suddenly changed? How would you cope? <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Friday Fantasy Show from the Bottled Imp. Exploring the realms of fantasy. My name is Ken Boyter and today we're going to be taking a look at Song of the Sea. Now this is an animation and it's directed by Tom Moore and it was released back in 2014. It was also nominated for an Academy Award at the 87th Academy Awards for Best Animated Feature. But did it win? No, no, no it didn't. Let's take a look anyway. <laughs> Song of the Sea, what is it all about? Tell me. No, I, I know, it's maybe you that don't know. Anyway, I'll tell you. The setup is, it's all about uh, a family, basically, at the heart of it. Connor, who is a lighthouse keeper, he lives on an island with his son Ben and his pregnant wife. And forgive me for the pronunciation, I believe some of these names are Irish. In fact, probably all of the names are Irish, seeing how this was, you know, predominantly an Irish production. Brona, I think that's how you pronounce it. And their sheepdog, Koo. Again, I think that's how you pronounce it. Sorry, I've not come across these names before. And I'm not very good at remembering names in terms of if I hear them, they don't go in. I don't know why. If anyone can help me with that, like how to remember how to say names, please do. Please, please contact the bottled imp. Anyway, tragedy strikes when Brown, if that's how you pronounce her name, Brown, she dies giving birth. That's what's implied. It's not explicit, but that is what is implied. The child survives, and so Ben has a little sister, which they call a name that I can't pronounce. It's S A O I R S E. So she. I might just call her little sister throughout this review. Anyway, six years passed, and Connor is a broken man, as you can imagine. He's lost his wife, and from what we gather, it was a loving family. They, you know, it was just a beautiful marriage and they had a little son and it was all going well and there was another one on the way. And to lose your wife must be huge or, you know, if you you lose any partner or, or any family member or any friend, it's horrible, isn't it? It's not a nice situation to be going through. And, you know, this film does deal about how you cope with grief and how you either, I guess, get dragged down by it or you accept it and kind of go through it and then I guess you never get over it but but at least you cope with it it's how you cope with it well six years later Connor hasn't coped very well with it and his daughter the the, the newborn baby she's obviously six now and she well she's a mute she she's happy but she hasn't said a word she's not communicated Ben her brother is jealous of her and he is mean he's cruel to her he's nasty to her even though when she was uh, you know on the way you know when when his mother was pregnant he said yes i'm going to be the best brother i'm going to love you know my my sibling but because in his eyes because his little sister arrived it meant that his mum had to go away he blames her he doesn't quite know that, I guess, or has internalised that, but that is the root of why he is angry and mean to her. Now, on, he, on um, the little girl's birthday, it's her birthday, and their granny comes to visit and, you know, declares that Ben and the sister are to live with her in the city, though. Completely different lifestyle. And they cleverly kind of imply that living in where they are, in a lighthouse, which is in a nice quaint little, well, it's quite remote, isn't it? It's on the coast, but the little village nearby is very quaint. The city is horrible, it's ugly, it's dirty, it's grimy, it's noisy. You know, why would, you know if you're used to a quiet life, why would you want to go to the city? So you can imagine they don't want to go. Plus, the granny 
is not a very nice person. She's a bit mean, she's a bit finickety, she's grumpy, she picks holes in people, you know, she criticises, and she thinks she knows best. So, but Connor, the father being a broken man, you know, it's his mum. And I guess he just thinks his mum knows best. He allows them to be taken by the granny. But, and this isn't a spoiler really, as you can imagine, kids being kids, they rebel. They don't, if they don't want to do something, you know, they try to kick off. Like, like I guess we all do, really. And so, when they get to the city, when they're living in Granny's house for a little bit, a couple of days maybe, they hatch a plan. They want to escape back to the lighthouse, to what they call home. So as I say, I'm not going to give any spoilers away. Um, there are various themes in this animation. And as I mentioned before, family is, is really at the heart of all of this. And it covers all the family dynamics. If you think you've got mother, children, you've got father, children, you've got father, daughter, you've got father, son, you've got mother, son, you've got husband, wife, you've got brother, sister, you've got, then got extra family, such as a granny, extended family. So there's a whole kind of dynamic going on and each relationship is different. So the brother and sister dynamic is different to the daughter, father dynamic, etc., etc. And they very cleverly explore that. In, in a very quick ways to establish exactly what's going on and what's, you know, what, what, what they're thinking, what they're feeling, without too many words, which I think is always the mark of a good film or a good story. It's show, not tell. And you know, this, this explores about how a family copes with or doesn't cope with, maybe in this case, with a family tragedy. You know, because if, if, if you have a tragedy, who, who do you want to turn to first? It's normally your family, if you're fortunate to have a family that can help you with that sort of thing. If you haven't got a family like that, then I guess you would consider your friends, your close friends' family. And so it also explores how each family member copes or doesn't cope, how they react to the, you know, supposed death of the mother so and also different situations again if you used to living somewhere and then you go and live somewhere else I mean I remember when I moved away to university I found it quite difficult because in my head I'd cut everything off you know I moved away from my hometown and then I thought right this is me now this is where I live and I kind of cut my old life not out but I mentally I'd built a wall around it I guess it wasn't good for my health believe you and me so you then realise actually there's different situations can trigger different um, feelings and emotions in people and some people cope better and some people don't. But they do a really good job of exploring that theme of how each individual member copes and then each, how each individual member reacts to the other person as well. Are they supportive? Are they dismissive? Do they laugh? Are they mocking? Or do they you know, want to take care and help them out? So again, Exploring the family really is at the heart of this theme. And they do it in a really realistic way. It's not all twee, it's not all nice. They do it in a really gritty way, which I really loved. And grief, obviously it deals with grief. It explores the possible way in which each family member copes with grief. Um, as I say, the, the dad, he just gets lost. He, you know, he can't cope with it and he goes, he turns to drink. That's how he copes with it. He just sits in the pub and there's a nice shot where he's in the pub and he's just there, and he's miserable, but that's how he copes with it. Ben, Ben copes the little boy, he copes with it by taking it out on his sister. Now the sister, interestingly enough, she's never spoken, and she seems the happiest out of all of them. I guess, and maybe this is a bit flippant, but I guess because she didn't know her mother, she, she's not really grieving, I guess, because she hasn't lost anything. But she can't understand why her brother, who you know you meant to love, if you're brothers and sister, you know brother sisters, you meant to, why he's being so nasty to her. But she just carries on. She's happy, and she's kind of not, you know, she's not lost in her own world, but she's you know in a slightly different world, being mute. So again, she wants that love from her brother. She's continually looking for that love. She gets it from her father, though. Connor does love her, and interestingly enough, the father kind of. He's a little bit, dis not dismissive of, the, of his son, but kind of seems to favour the daughter. Now, I don't know whether that's because of what happened or whether he's, you know, thinking that, you know, maybe he's somehow feeling guilty about the mother dying in childbirth. 
I don't know, but it's just a really interesting way that they explore grief. There's also the theme of the importance of being human and a free spirit. And that sounds really corny, but they do it in such a beautiful way. Being true to who you are and what your soul or your spirit needs, you know, what, what you really crave, you know, you get that feeling. Now for me, I, you know, I like to create stuff, I like to write, so I get, I get my soul kind of really enjoys writing. I like to paint, you know, there's various different things. Some people like to play sports, some people play music, you know, so it's whatever kind of makes your soul sing. And I don't want to give too many spoilers away, but the, so for example, the, 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 the daughter, she, she likes music, she loves music and her imagination, she's sort of, and that really is uplifting. And I guess out of all of them, certainly at the beginning, she's the one that's living that. She's actually really connected to her soul and what, what her spirit needs. So she, in a way, that then opens up the question, well, being human, you know, you've got dark aspects of being human and situations, you know, and also in the animal kingdom, haven't you? Every creature, humans, non-creatures, uh, non-creatures, non-humans, they also experience, you know, dark sides in their life. So you imagine, you know, if you're a pack of wolves or something and, and one of your pack gets attacked by a bear and eaten and killed, you're going to feel that as an animal, you, you know, elephants, when, you know, we've seen footage, they grieve over a lost one. So it affects us all. And so that's part of being human. And I guess that's why, you know, I feel we're very connected to animals as well. We're not too, you know, dissimilar in that respect. So you've got to, you know, and I think also it sort of explores the, how about embracing that pain, you know, embracing the dark side, embracing the, the, the grief, if you like, in this situation, and acknowledging it and, and sort of owning it and being part of you, but that doesn't mean it drags you down, it just means it kind of, I guess, makes you stronger. There are stories within stories, that's another theme, it explores how stories can help us cope and process not only everyday life, but also, you know, because the ups and downs of every day, you know, those sort of nitty gritty minute things, but also the bigger picture. Um, from the beginning of time, you know, humans have created stories in order to explain their world around them, what, why the weather is like it is, you know, why the sun rises every day, why there's a moon, the, the, the origin story, why, you know, how were the seas created, how were mountains created, how was grass created, how were creatures created, you know, how were we created. We've always come up with stories. And so really, for me, being human is stories, it is living stories. We are stories, each of us has our own story and we add to it every second, every day. And also there's a the theme of coping with adolescence and explores that, you know, the pain and suffering of when you have to adjust from being a child to an adult, you know, that, that I guess, responsibility kicks in, but there's other things that kick in as well. And so it's very, you know, and they do it in such a moving way and such a spiritual and uplifting way. It's really beautiful. In terms of the fantasy elements, yes, it's beautiful. There's so much folklore oozing, oozing, you know, it's got that folklore, that mythical quality to it. And again, I don't want to give too much away because it is, it is a nice twist with, with the fantasy. So it, it sets off in reality, if you like, and then goes into more and more fantasy. But I don't want to give that away because it's such delightful if you don't know what's coming. Um, I love this film. It's so beautiful, it's charming, and it's, it's very profound. And it, it, it's one of these films like um, if you've seen A Monster Calls, if you haven't, check that out as well. We've done a review of that, where it deals with heavy topics, it deals with heavy issues, but does it in such a way that isn't patronising, isn't spoon-fed, doesn't tell you what to think or what to feel, but just lets the story unfold that you kind of, you just really get it and it kind of washes into you. And it really, I mean, this sort of film that stays with me, will stay with me for a long time because it, it seems real. So even though there's lots of fantasy elements into it, it's woven into proper, you know, proper human issues that we have to deal with. Um, it's a great family film. Um, I don't know, seven maybe, seven up, eight up, they'll get something out of it. 
And it's the sort of film that if you watched it as a child and you watch it again as an adult, you'll go, oh, I didn't realise that. That's there's so many layers. It's got very layered film to this. Um, it's, uh, bless you, Julian, <laughs> a little off stage there. That's how emotional it is. <laughs> when Julian gets emotional, he doesn't cry, he sneezes. <laughs> yeah, so the characters, oh, they're so beautifully drawn, and I mean that in the sense of drawing as well as drawn, as in, you know, well-rounded characters. They're not cliched, they're individuals, they're well-rounded, and all of them go on, and to be cliched here, they go on an arc, a journey, a story, they develop, you know, they, they change throughout the film, and they do learn things, but it's not done in a twee, sort of corny way. Um, and it's an emotional storyline, the characters are emotional, you know, it tugs at your heartstrings, or, you know, it makes you laugh. Lots, lots to enjoy in this film. The music, now, you know, I, I, don't, I'm, I don't really know how to review music. I've never been out known how to describe that, but I kind of, I know what music I like. I love this sort of music. It's haunting, it's beautiful. I think that's all I can say about it. It's just one of those soundtracks that you go, yeah, I kind of, I would like to listen to that just on its own. You know, I love listening to fantasy soundtracks. I definitely would add this one to my collection. The animation, oh, I've not even touched on that yet. It's gorgeous, it's so beautiful, it's watercolour effect. Beautifully designed, it's sort of designed, it goes into sort of design and there's a certain style to it as well as being realistic. So it's set, you know, it, you can tell what things are, but then sometimes there's, I guess, dream sequences or you know, more fantastical sequences, so that then design elements come into it. I don't know why I'm doing that, but you know, things swirl around, beautifully composed, the composition on each frame is beautiful, and it's charming, and I don't know why, but charming, you know, if you can make something, certainly a film or a story that has charm to it, and delicacy about it, then I think you're onto a winner kind of Bagpuss, with sort of some of the stuff that I grew up with on TV, Bagpuss or the Clangers, you know, there was a certain charm to them. Um, Mesmerising as well is, is a lot of the animation. Um, yeah, as I say, the fantasy elements, there's magic in the real world. There's also little creatures, I don't want to give too much away, there's a nice folklore feel to it. The overall effect though of the film is uplifting, it's thought provoking and I guess you know, if you are going through a grieving process within your family, this might help. You know, I do find that stories and films and books, they do help, even video games, you know, I've kind of got emotional with video games as well. Because if it's a well-told story, it just follows the basic rule of storytelling. Good characterization, good storytelling. Unfortunately though, it did lose money at the box office. Yeah, it was, apparently there was a budget of 7.5 million, and it only made at the box office $4.1 million, which is such a tragedy, especially if it was nominated for an Academy Award. So if you haven't seen this, I urge you, go out, see it somehow. If you can afford the DVD, go and, go and buy the DVD. Or if you can download it, download it. It's a beautiful film. And I no wonder it was nominated for an Oscar. And it's just a shame. I feel like not enough people have seen this. So I'm championing the cause of Song of the Sea. <laughs> Song of the Sea. I urge you to see it. See what I did there? <laughs> That's terrible. No, seriously, go and watch this, especially if you've got children, they will love it. It's just beautiful, it's charming. And you're probably wondering, if you haven't looked it up already, who did win the Oscar that beat this one? Well, it was Big Hero 6. Apparently that was a very good film. I didn't see that. Maybe I ought to check that out as well. But yeah, beautiful, beautiful film. Can't recommend it enough. Thank you so much for watching. We have done lots of reviews now. We've got hundreds. I'm going to say, yeah, we were tipping into the hundreds of reviews. And also we've got other stuff as well. We've got how to write fantasy guides. We've got specials where we go off. And we've also got the Bottled Imp Show, which is two, what is, it, what is it, 18, no, 16, I can't count, 16 episodes of myself and Julian, the co-creator of The Bottled Imp, mucking about, but it's all about fantasy. It's a lot of fun, check those out. Just binge watch us, binge watch us. If you know other people that love fantasy, then spread the word of the imp. But remember, to keep it unreal, especially if you like swimming.